Jenny! Run! Run! Making movies is a complex process involving hundreds of people coordinating in just the right way to get the perfect shots. As such, film sets are often highly regulated environments with very strict rules. However, some of these rules get pretty extreme. And today on Collider, we're looking at the five weirdest on-set rules that Hollywood casts had to follow. No running on the set with Tom Cruise. Perhaps no other actor is more famous or infamous for his commitment than Tom Cruise. While the devoted actor is well known for often performing his own stunts, Cruise also has a notable reputation for being rather intense and particular, serving as a producer on many of his films. There are more subtle ways that this control can manifest though, and one of the most notable examples comes from one of his least successful films. When one thinks about the most iconic Tom Cruise roles, the 2017 reboot of The Mummy is not a film that comes to mind. Initially planned as the start of a new cinematic universe for the classic horror monsters of Universal, the project was a massive failure, and one that left plans for a future franchise basically dead in the water. One actor who did enjoy it, however, was Annabelle Wallace, who worked with Cruise on the film playing British archaeologist Jenny Halsey. Wallace soon discovered that her co-star had an odd rule during filming, no running alongside him during action scenes. According to an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Cruise told Wallace, Nobody runs on screen with me. Tom Cruise is known for his epic running skills, so presumably he was under the impression that there was no one out there who could keep up with him. However, he did make a rare exception for the actor after seeing her running abilities, which she conveniently showed off every morning by timing her treadmill runs with when Cruise would arrive on set. Eventually, he relented and added running scenes with the two of them, much to Wallace's proud delight. Harry Potter's cast needed to be 100% British. Finding a group of child actors who could handle the pressure of carrying a massive franchise was challenging enough, but the casting of Harry Potter was also restricted by one significant factor. Author J.K. Rowling had one major rule when it came to the casting of her characters, which was that every actor in the franchise had to be British. The ever-growing cast eventually became a who's who of British acting royalty, from Richard Harris to Alan Rickman to Rafe Fiennes. But the British-only rule also led to a beloved American star being rejected for a major role in the series. Chris Columbus, who directed the first two Harry Potter films, revealed in an interview with Business Insider that Robin Williams desperately wanted to be a part of the franchise. Not only did he want to play Hagrid, whose lovable nature made Williams feel perfect for the role, but the actor later sought the part of Professor and Werewolf, Remus Lupin. Although some Americans were cast in the film in non-speaking roles, such as Columbus's own daughter appearing as a student in the first movie, the British-only rule meant that casting Robin Williams as a main character was never an option. Instead, the role of Hagrid went to Robbie Coltrane and David Thewlis portrayed Lupin, with each making the roles their own. Can we find all this in London? If you know where to go. Tom Holland couldn't see the script for Avengers Endgame. Few actors are as infamous for their accidental dropping of spoilers as Tom Holland. What did you just say? I, I take that back. The star has a long history of saying too much during the promotion of several Marvel projects, and with the highly anticipated Avengers Endgame being the culmination of a decade's worth of cinematic universe building, Holland's loose lips became too risky. The studio decided not to take any chances with their chatty Spider-Man and imposed some strict regulations. The directing duo, the Russo brothers, confirmed to IndieWire that Holland was never allowed to read the script for Avengers Endgame during filming, because as Joe Russo said, he has a very difficult time keeping his mouth shut. The actor only received his own lines, not even knowing who he would be sharing scenes with or who he was supposed to be facing off with when he performed his fight scenes. Regarding these anonymous fights, Holland went on to say, I'm just standing there punching the air for 15 minutes, and when I took the job I didn't think that's what I'd be doing. However, he also said that he'd gotten used to the practice. Rebel Wilson had weight restrictions for Pitch Perfect. Throughout the history of Hollywood, idealized body types and the costs needed to maintain them have been a source of controversy. Many actors are pressured to meet an unrealistic standard, especially regarding their weight. While many women have pushed back against such narratives regarding body image, many are still pressured to maintain a specific body shape, with one star in particular being contractually obligated to do so. What's your name? Fat Amy. Um, you call yourself... Fat Amy? During an appearance on the popular podcast called Her Daddy, Rebel Wilson opened up about her recent weight loss and revealed that the biggest obstacle was not psychological or physical, but rather contractual. 
While filming the Pitch Perfect movies, Wilson was prohibited from losing more than 10 pounds. To her credit, the actor never let the clause in her contract prevent her from enjoying the role in all three films, despite her weight being a source of mockery in the script. Nevertheless, the obligation still had consequences for Wilson, affecting her career and health. Like her character Patricia Hobart, better known as Fat Amy in the films, Wilson has often projected an aura of confidence about her size, but she still made a major change to her weight after she was done playing the role. In terms of her career, the actor expressed fears that she was becoming typecast and wanted to diversify her resume, even though she loved the parts she'd been able to play. On a more personal level, she also wanted to maintain her ability to have children, which she was told was in danger after seeking medical advice. Thanks to a series of lifestyle changes, she later succeeded in her goal and lost over 80 pounds over several years. Christopher Nolan doesn't allow chairs on set. Today, Christopher Nolan is one of the most famous directors in the industry, and with his film Oppenheimer, he took home his first Academy Awards. The film made nearly a billion dollars at the box office, which is surprising for an R-rated political drama where many of the scenes involve people sitting in a room and talking. However, all of those roundtable discussions probably came as a relief for the actors, if statements by the cast can be believed. Nolan is known to be a strict professional on set, which led to an odd rule being imposed for his first Best Picture winner, no chairs. During an Actors on Actors interview with Variety, Robert Downey Jr. told his former Marvel co-star Mark Ruffalo that Christopher Nolan does not allow the cast members to use chairs between takes on set. Apparently, this was done primarily as a way to keep the stars focused on their work. This is not even the first time Nolan has enforced such a rule, as he did the same thing on his films The Dark Knight Rises and Interstellar. As reported by Business Insider during a discussion with Hugh Jackman, Anne Hathaway talked about Nolan's no-chairs policy, stating that Nolan views it as a matter of professionalism. He doesn't allow chairs, Hathaway said, and his reasoning is if you have chairs, people will sit, and if they're sitting, they're not working. One could say the decision to remove chairs from a set is rather extreme, but it actually kind of makes sense. On a film set as big as Oppenheimer's, time is money, and no amount of it can go to waste. By quite literally keeping the cast on their toes, not only can Nolan ensure he gets the best performances, but it also helps enforce maximum productivity on set. Extreme or not, Nolan's tactics obviously paid off, as both Downey Jr. and his co-star Cillian Murphy later won Oscars for their performances, with the film garnering plenty of other prestigious awards. I've got a group coming. Oh, I'll sit in. Not this one. So what do you think? Were these rules worth it for their iconic end results, or should the powers that be behind these films have allowed their actors some more freedom, and maybe even a chair from time to time? Let us know in the comments below, and stay tuned to Collider, where we'll keep sharing little-known trivia about your favorite movies, shows, and stars.